Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another YouTube tutorial. You're joining me in the beautiful state of Oregon in my cabin and I'm waiting for some beautiful light over Mount Hood so I might be here for a few days. In the meantime I thought I'd record a tutorial which will show us some incredible exposure blending techniques in Photoshop and those of you who already do exposure blending or digital blending will know how important these techniques are for giving us really clean results. Now, this is the first time you would have seen my face in my YouTube tutorials, so I apologize for that. It might not be the prettiest face in the world. Now, this isn't a comprehensive video tutorial on exposure blending in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you five very powerful techniques for blending exposures very quickly and very easily. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of all of these techniques, and hopefully that will inspire you to look deeper into the processes. And in the description of this video on YouTube, or on the blog post in Shutter Evolve, I've included links which will help you look further into each of these techniques. So let's carry on with the tutorial. Here we have an image from my home city, Newcastle, and we have a darker exposure which exposes nicely for the sky, and we have a brighter exposure which exposes mainly for the shadows in the darker areas, and we want to blend these two. And I'm going to use a process called Rapid Blend If, and I've taught this in my Art of Cityscapes course and my Mastering um, Raya Pro course. Now for Raya Pro users, I'm going to quickly show you how we do it in Raya Pro. We just open up the panel and we just choose Dark. You see Rapid Blend If Dark. And instantly we've blended these exposures. Now I'm just going to undo that. And I do that by clearing the layer style. And if you're not a Raya Pro user, to do this all you need to do is right click on the dark exposure then we go to blending options and then you'll see where it says blend if gray here we go to the underlying layer we hold down Control and alt on a pc or command and option on a mac and we can snap off half of this arrow and slide it all the way along and then we press ok and you can see we've instantly blended the exposures alternatively if you have the brighter exposure on top for Raya Pro users, we just go to Raya Pro and we just choose Bright. And we've blended the exposures exactly the same very quickly. And for non Raya Pro users, we right click on that layer and go to Blending Options. And we do the same, but this time we snap in half this top arrow. So we hold down Control and Alt on a PC or Command and Option on a Mac and left click the arrow and slide it left. And then we press OK. And there you see we have blended our exposures very quickly and easily. Now this is probably the quickest exposure blending method, but it isn't always the best. But it's definitely a good tool or a good skill to have when you're blending simple scenes like this. The next exposure blending technique is apply image, and I use this all of the time in my exposure blending. Sometimes I use luminosity masks just to give me more power over the digital blending experience, but apply image is often really quick and very accurate. Now as you can see we have a darker exposure here in the middle and a brighter exposure on top and our base layer is our normal exposure. Now I want to recover the highlights from the darker exposure and to do that I just choose the darker exposure, I select Raya Pro and I go to, I'm going to choose Darks 2 in this example. Then I make the darker layer visible and you can see we've instantly recovered the sky without affecting the foreground. Now, if you're not a Raya Pro user, let me show you how to do that. And I've actually done this quite a few times in my other tutorials. So if you look especially on the Challenge Jimmy series, you'll see a lot of examples of apply image being used over different scenes in different situations. And you'll get an idea of how powerful this technique really is. So if you're not a Raya Pro user, all we do is make the darker exposure invisible. We create a white mask. We go to Image, Apply Image, and make sure your settings are the same as mine and we just press OK. Now we've created this mask here we're going to make it a stronger mask by going back to image apply image and doing it again and now we've created a darker mask. Don't worry if I'm moving too quickly if you look in my Challenge Jimmy videos you'll get a better idea of apply image. Now if we make the darker exposure visible just as before we've blended the exposures nicely. Now for the brighter exposure, again, I'm going to show you how to do it with Raya Pro. We just go to Raya Pro and I'm going to use Bright One. And now if I just make this visible, I can bring down the opacity because it's a little bit too bright. 
and I can make the darker exposure visible. And now you can see we've blended these two exposures nicely. And if you're not a Raya Pro user, I'm just gonna delete this mask and make these layers invisible and create a new mask and go to image, apply image. And this time I'm gonna click invert so that we invert our mask and we're targeting just the shadows and press okay. And again, we can make both of those layers visible and you can see we've nicely recovered the highlights and the shadows. In the next technique, I'm going to show you how we can very easily recover shadows and highlights with luminosity masks. And these are kind of like the daddies of exposure blending. And the reason why we use uh, luminosity masks ahead of apply image is because they give a finer control over the areas we choose to paint in or to recover. And I'll show you what I mean now. So if you don't have any luminosity mask software to generate the luminosity masks, you can always download my free easy panel and you'll see a link in the description of this video in, in YouTube to download the easy panel. I'm going to use Raya Pro and go to luminosity masks and just create all. And when I do this, I like to put black masks on all of the other layers apart from our base exposure, our main exposure. Now for Raya Pro users, it's much easier for us to, to see the masks that we're going to choose. For example, we can choose Brights 3 and select C Mask and we can see our mask that way. But if you're not a Raya Pro user and you're using standard luminosity masks, instead we can just go to the channels. And I'll do it this way just to make it easier for you. So I want to get a selection of the sky without affecting the foreground. And I think we could choose between Brights 1 and Brights 2. We don't always want a really contrasting mask. Usually a more relaxed mask is fine, like this one. So to make the selection, I'm going to hold down Control on a PC or Command on a Mac and left click on Brights 1. And you can see we've now got an active selection, these marching ants here. I'll check the mask of the darker exposure. I'll press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants. Choose my paintbrush set the foreground to white. Sorry, leaves are falling on me as I'm speaking. Maybe doing it outdoors wasn't the best idea. And I just start to paint in the sky and you see that we're not affecting the foreground here. And that's the before and after. And to recover the shadows, we'll make the brighter exposure visible. We'll go to our channels and we'll choose a general darks mask like darks 2. Here you can see our shadows are mainly selected because they're white and our sky is mainly excluded from the mask. So again, control or command on a Mac and left click and choose the mask. And the foreground is already set to white. So I'm gonna hide my marching ants and I'm just gonna paint in that brighter exposure. And I'm gonna reduce the opacity until it looks more natural. Let's say at around 46%. And there, is the before and after. So we have a normal exposure here which is underexposed in the shadows and overexposed in the highlights and when we make these two layers visible we have a much more balanced image and that was using luminosity masks. Now the next technique I'm going to show you is using gradient masks. This is also a really easy technique. All we need to do is have a darker exposure on top, a brighter exposure on the bottom. Keep our darker exposure visible. We create a mask then we go over to our gradient tool. You might see the paint bucket here, so just right click and choose the gradient tool. When you've done that, make sure your settings are the same as mine. So you have white going from the left and black to the right. You have this first setting, linear gradient chosen, opacity at 100%, dither and transparency both selected. And now we hold down shift just to draw a straight line and we draw down the center of our image and we need the horizon to be roughly in the middle of that line. And we've instantly blended these two exposures. You see, we've recovered the sky in the darker exposure. Now this really only works if you've got a good flat horizon or reasonably flat horizon. Often it's a little bit difficult when you have lots of mountains over here and over there and on the horizon, because then you start to get black edging around the, the tops of the mountains. So I recommend this just with a, an image where you have a flat horizon. And finally, this is only for um, CC 2014 and, and 2015 users. So we have a darker exposure here, which is nicely exposed for the lights up here and the lights along here. And we have a brighter exposure, which is great for everything else really. So we want to recover these highlights in our brighter exposure from the darker exposure. 
So I create a mask on the darker exposure. Then we go to select, color range, and here we can choose highlights, midtones, or shadows. So usually when we first go into color range, it'll be sample colors at the top. And we just choose highlights because we're trying to target the highlights here. We're creating a mask which has the highlights as mainly white and the shadows as mainly dark. So we're trying to separate the brighter tones from the darker tones. And I think this is a pretty good mask already actually, because we can see we have the areas here that we want to recover and the areas here, they're quite bright and the areas around it are dark. So they won't be selected in the mask. And so if we just press okay, this is the final result. You can see we've recovered the highlights almost instantly in the overexposed areas and we've recovered them there. Now I didn't necessarily want to affect the beautiful light trails in the foreground, so I can always create a black brush and just paint those light trails out like that. And there you go, a really quick way for people using CC 2014 and 2015 to blend exposures in Photoshop. And that's it. If you're new to my YouTube channel, there's lots of different videos on there that can help you with all sorts of post-processing. And if you feel that you have photography friends who would find the video useful, feel free to share it with them as well. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.